morning, everybody. We thank God for bringing us together. Once again, David said, I was glad when it was said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So I pray that even as you have come to the house of the Lord, you will be glad this morning. You will exchange your morning with the gladness of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be your strength this morning. The peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard your heart and your mind even in Christ Jesus so that you are anxious about nothing. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us at your feet. We thank you, Lord, for by grace, Lord, you have saved us, O oh God. For by grace, O oh God, you have called us, O oh God, unto a holy nation, unto a holy priesthood, O oh God. Even to declare your praises of him, of you who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Your word says that the entrance of your word, it gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Spirit of the living God, I pray that you will speak to us this morning. For the letter kills, but your word says it is the spirit that quickens, the spirit that gives life. So even as we have come this morning, Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive and to understand your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I thank God for the opportunity to um, share the word of God with us um, this morning. I thank um, the leadership, pastor, the elders, deacons, deaconesses. I thank all of you for gathering even here this morning. There was no way this word would come forth if there were empty seats. So I thank God that you came to church this morning. And I pray that the word of God will bless you. The word of God will be a blessing. will come in the way that it ought to come. So that you, as you hear it, you will run with it. You will be blessed even in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today is um, Gospel Sunday. And um, I think every, is it the last the last but one or the last um, Sunday of every month is set aside as um, Gospel Sunday. And this is to remind ourselves of our commission, or of what God has assigned us to do. Because it is a man to forget. So God says he is not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he changes his mind. It is a man to forget. But just so that we do not forget, we are reminded the last Sunday of every month as Gospel Sunday of what the Lord has called you and I to do. And the word I want to share with us um, this morning is not something that I am walking in or something that I'm experiencing. It's something that I'm provoking myself and I pray that it will provoke you and I to even rise up and do what God has called us to do. So as I say it, don't look at me and think that, and who are you, or where, you know. Just know that I am talking to myself as well, and not only to you. Um, I titled my message this morning, The Lord Has Made Me. Hallelujah. The Lord Has Made Me. The Bible says that in Genesis, God made the heavens, and he made the earth. And then he made man as well, all right. And then the Lord blessed man. He gave him dominion to take charge of the earth. So when you read um, Job 33, 4, um, it says that the Spirit of God had made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. So in the beginning, we know that God is a spirit. So when God made us, God made spirit. But he formed us out of the, um, the ground, the, um, the dust of the earth. And when he breathed into man, man became a living soul. All right. But Job makes us understand Job 33, 4. So I'll be using King James Version throughout. So if you don't mind um, for... Um, uniformity you can project um king james version please thank you very much it says that the spirit of god had made me and the breath of the almighty has given me life so god gave dominion to man to rule the earth to be king on the earth even as he was king or he is king in heaven but we know what happened the devil deceived man and man lost the dominion to the devil when you get to genesis 6 um, verse 5 and 6 the bible says that god regretted that he had made man because the wickedness that was upon the face of the earth was too much that god was like i regret that i made man even though after making man and making everything god saw that it was good but then you get to genesis 6 and he regretted that he made man 
All right, the Bible also says that whatever God does is forever. So man was made forever. Man was made to live on this earth forever. It was not a plan of God for man to die. So because God is spirit and God lives forever. So if he made man, man was destined to also live forever. But when, when man fell, what happened? We lost our dominion. We lost our place. We became slaves you know, to the enemy. But thank God that because whatever God makes makes us forever, he had to come with an alternate plan. He had to come with his agenda B to reinstate or to restore what he had planned even from the very beginning. So the Bible says that what God sent his son, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right. So when you and I believe in Christ Jesus, when you and I accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become born again. All right. And the Bible says that you are no longer born of your parents, but you are born from above. You are born of the Spirit. You are born from above. And then now you must live forever, even beginning here on earth when you got born again. All right. So the Bible says that when you and I even die, we only fall asleep. The death of the saint is not an actual death as we know it, but we fall asleep knowing that we will rise up again even to be with the Lord. Amen. So the Bible says the word, so um, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the old things are past. Behold, what all things are become new. All right, so when God gave birth to us again by the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that he that is from above is above all. So as he has given us birth by the Holy Spirit, you and I are now born from heaven. Our citizenship is not of this earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. We belong to the kingdom of God. So God, tell, Jesus told us that what, even though you are on this earth, even though you are in this world, all right, you, you are not of this world because what because of you are born of the spirit and the holy spirit what lives inside of you the bible says or oh, the holy spirit bears witness with our spirit man that we are the children of god all right so now that we have been made um, citizens of god what next all right you and i have been made citizens of god what next psalm 100 verse 3 tells us that the lord has made us and we are not ourselves all right, so after you are made a citizen of God, after God has made you again, permit me to say, because you were born, you know, of the, in the human nature, born to send thanks to Adam. But when you got born again, you are now made in the image of God once again. You are now made in the likeness of God because the spirit of God what, has come to indwell you. The same spirit that created you has come back to live inside of you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the blood of Jesus. All right. So the Bible says that what the Lord has made us and we are not of ourselves. When you go to John 6 verse 38 um, to 40, this is what Jesus said. John chapter 6 verse 38 to 40. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, all right, but to do the will of him that sent me. All right, so put your name there. For I came down from heaven, or I have come down from heaven. Whoever is born again is born of God. You have been born from heaven. So not of your earthly parents anymore, but you have been born from above. And Jesus tells us here that I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. What is the will of him that sent me? And this is the Father's will which had sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day, or should raise it up yep, at the last day. Verse 40, and it says that, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. Second Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, the Bible says that, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this age, or the God of this world, had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of, image of God, should shine unto them. All right, the Jesus said what in... Um, John 6, 40, it says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who sees the Son, 
all right, will have everlasting life. But the God of this age has blinded the eyes of those who the unbelievers so that they cannot see the sun, so that they cannot behold the son of God and to have everlasting life. All right. And this is why God has called you and I. This is why God has saved us. You are not of your own. You are not of yourself. He did not save you unto yourself. Neither did he save you to your family, your immediate environment. He saved you to bring nations to him. He saved you to bring many peoples to him from all walks of life, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord has made me. What has the Lord made you? Or who has the Lord made you? I came up with a few. How much time do I have? What time? I don't see it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the Lord has made me. As time permits, wherever I get to, um, we will end. And then um, we'll go to the next thing on the um, program. The Lord has made me. The, the first thing I want to mention is the Lord has made you and I co-laborers with him. Amen. The Lord has made me a co-laborer. He has made you a co-laborer. First Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with God. It means God is working and he requires of you and I also to be working, to be busy about the Father's business, even as Jesus said at age 12. When you read Matthew 9, 37 to 38, Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful. Or the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The Lord has made you and I laborers, co-laborers in his vineyard to bring in the lost. This is why Jesus came to die. This is why Jesus came to shed his blood on the cross for you and I. And a co labor. So he said, well, the harvest truly is plenteous. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. All right, laborers ought to be sent. There are those who ought to be sent into the harvest. And typical of the harvest, just consider somebody who is harvesting his, um, his crops, you know, in the field when the time or the harvest season comes. All right, there are different people. There are different categories of assignments or different jobs that ought to be done to see for the for the peanut or whatever you and I like to end up on your table. All right, it starts from the seed that is that the, the he said the harvest. All right, truly is ripe. So we won't even start from where the seed is sown. He said the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are what are few. Beloved, God has called you and I into this harvest. You and I are co-laborers with him. They are those who are supposed to pray for the Lord to send laborers. And they are the laborers that have to go to, into the harvest to bring in the harvest. They are the laborers that have to what, process um, the, 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 um, the product and then so on and so forth. I don't want to bore us over time, but just picture if somebody, if you want to make, if you want to make granite paste, it start from the seed, all right, that is harvested from the field. The whole process, all right, they are, everybody has a role to play. And that is how it is in the kingdom of God. We are co-laborers with Christ. Um, Jesus said, my father is working and I am also working. So God is counting on you and I, and we are being reminded every month that the father is working and he is calling you and I also what to do the work, to do the same. The Lord has made us also what ambassadors of Christ. All right. God is making his appeal through us as ambassadors of Christ, as representatives of the kingdom of God, as represent Jesus said, what well, then the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the ends of the earth and then the end will come. All right. So he has made us ambassadors of this kingdom message. And as he is in heaven, so has he made us you and I, even as you and I are here on this earth all right the lord has made us co-laborers in his vine that you have a role to play i have a role to play if you do not know which role you ought to play play 
pray about it and the Spirit of God will tell you. If for nothing at all, start with what comes easy to you. Start with the gift you have or what comes your natural ability. Start with that. Use it even in the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about, it may not, your, what God has given you may not find its place in this house. It will definitely find its place at the, your workplace. Use it even to glorify God. Be a kingdom citizen. Be a co-laborer. Be an ambassador of Christ even wherever you find yourself or wherever you and I find ourselves. The Lord has made us kings and priests. He has made us kings and priests. Revelation 1, 6, Revelation 5 and 10. And it says that, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on this earth with him. Hallelujah. What does a king do? You know who a king is. You know what a king does. For lack of time, I won't go into the description. I think all of us are pretty much aware of king's rule. All right. Kings have domain. They take charge. All right. And there's no country where there are more than, there's more than one king. There can only be one. All right. Unless that king leaves the scene, there's nobody else coming. There is only one king. And in the same way as God has made you and I kings, wherever we find ourselves, if darkness is having a field day, we must take charge. We must let the enemy know that we are present. And wherever the kingdom of God is, it takes influence. It takes dominion. And the enemy cannot have a field day. And so we pray that even as, as children of God and God has made us kings, may we take charge. May we take control over our dominion, over our marriages, over our houses, over our children, over wherever we find ourselves. Not to enslave anybody, if anything, to put the enemy in his place and to set even people free that are around us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord has made us priests to stand in the gap. Priests pray. All right, priests intercede, priests stand, stand in the gap. And God said, and I sought, I sought for a man to stand in the gap so that, you know, the evil will not befall the land. But he found no one, and his own arm wrought righteousness for him. And Jesus came. The Lord has made you and I kings and priests. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. Beloved, if you don't pray for somebody, somebody will not be saved. It takes prayer to deliver people from the dominion of darkness and translate them into the kingdom of light. It does not take your beautiful words. It does not take the new word, the things that you have discovered or the, the wow, um, the, the words or the word of God that wow somebody. No, it takes the spirit and it takes you and I praying, interceding, standing in the the gap until we see the manifestation of the kingdom of God even in the life of the person. So the Bible says that when Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. When Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. The only way Zion can bring forth, and Zion is the body of Christ. We want to increase numbers. When Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. The Lord has made you a priest to pray, not only for your house, not only for your needs, but more importantly, for the agenda of God, even in this, in your city, in your nation, to the ends of the world, in the name of Jesus. The Lord has made me for good works. The Lord has made me for good Good works. Isaiah 61, 1 and 4. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of sight to them that are bound, or to the or the opening of the prison, sorry, to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Beloved, there are some people that are in the house that are mourning. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. It takes an encouraging word. It takes a word that lifts up even as the Lord has anointed your lips. Even to encourage somebody. To give peace to somebody. To give comfort to somebody. To impart the Holy Spirit. The comforter. The strengthener. The advocate. The, the, the intercessor. And so on and so forth. To impart part that even onto somebody because the Holy Spirit is what? He is in you. He dwells in you. And then he infills you. So Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to appoint unto them that morning Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the Spirit 
of heaviness, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why? So that you and I, or them that mourn in Zion, might be called the oaks of righteousness, O God. The planting of the Lord, that the Lord might be glorified even in you and I. And the Bible says that what? After that, then they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many nations beloved if you are going through tough times if you are going through challenges it is very very difficult i know it i have experienced it to go and share the word of god with somebody he's like god if you have not done mine for me i cannot go and tell somebody anything if i don't feel your love if i don't feel that you are with me if i don't feel that you are concerned about the things that concern me i cannot go and tell somebody that god loves you i cannot go and tell somebody that trust in god i cannot go and tell somebody that the lord will provide when i haven't seen the provision come my way it is not easy but the bible says that what when the spirit of the lord comes upon us he gives us the oil of joy and even as the lord does yours for you he will do he will do it or as he does it for somebody he will do it for you as well the bible said that seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things that you and i are looking for all these things that you and i are praying for all these things that you and i are concerned about he would do it for us if you do it for somebody god would do it for you just like jesus left his dominion he left everything to come and die he did not hold on to anything he said master i will come and do it and because he came to do it for you and I beloved you and I also ought to do it for one another so I dare say that even when you haven't seen yours even when your light is not shining even when things are gloomy for you beloved do it for your brother do it for your sister and God will do it for you because he is waiting for you to do it do not think about yourself do not be concerned about yourself all right put yourself aside it is not easy it is easier said Put yourself aside and go about the master's business and you will see the manifestation of the glory of God even in your life because God will not lie. Beloved, I'm on number four. The Bible says that the Lord has made us, if not some of us, overseers of the flock of God. I don't have time, so I won't continue. All right. It says that what the Lord has made us also what overseers of the flock of God. This is especially to the leaders um, Acts 20, 28 to 29, he says, Take heed therefore, take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Why? Because I know that after my departing, grievous wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. All right, so God has made some of us or some overseers over the flock of God so that what they will shepherd the flock they will watch over the flock just as David was anointed and he was watching over the flock when the wolf showed up all right when the bear showed up the Bible says or oh, David went after the wolf he went after the bear the bear came for a lamb but David did not say that ah, but this is but a lamb besides the sheep who did not belong to him they belong to his father all right the Bible says that he went after the bear and he snatched the lamb out of the mouth of the bear there because what he was doing it not for his father's sake but he knew that something had been entrusted into his care and it was expedient on him even to take care of it the last time our brother shared with us that what the lord has given you and I, each and every one of us he has given us something he has given us a gift. He has given us a talent. He has given us a treasure. He says about occupy till I come. Use it till I come. Be about my business with what I have given you till I come. Some have been given 10 things. Some have been given one. Some have been given two. But be about the master's business because he is coming and he's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave to you? When you read um, Exodus 7, um, and I just want to go back there. The enemy is not going, to let, not, not going to let people, the children of God, you know, go easily. Them that he has enslaved, he's not going to let them go easily. All right. That is why the anointing comes upon us. Jesus told the disciples that go and wait in the upper room. After they had been indwelt by the Holy Spirit, after he resurrected, he breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. He said, go and wait in the upper room until you are endued with power from on high. The Bible says that what the enemy is called the God of this world. 
and he has enslaved people. So he is not going to let them go. He rules over the affairs on this earth. But as far as you and I consent, are concerned, our rule is from the kingdom. We receive our power. We receive our authority from the kingdom because we are born of God. So God has anointed you and I to preach the good news. When you go to Exodus chapter 7 and from verse 1, the Lord told Moses, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh was not an ordinary man, all right? So God had to counter him, all right? God had to come to Pharaoh on his own terms. So Moses went as a God unto Pharaoh, and he says, and I have made Aaron your priest or your spokesperson, all right? And when Moses went, Moses did not go just like that. He went with the word of God, all right, to demonstrate the power of God. When you go to um, Deuteronomy 26, it says that by a mighty hand, the Lord delivered the children of Israel, all right, and that mighty hand is the Holy Spirit. The mighty hand of God is available unto you and I today to snatch from the kingdom of darkness them that are perishing, to snatch the children of God that are still lost. The Bible says that Jesus said the word, it is for such that I came, and they are those that are still lost that must come into the vineyard god is counting on you and i even to bring the lost into the house god is counting on you and i we have an assignment it is not enough to come to church we come to church tops three hours two and a half four hours if you have a meeting here or there no but we have a whole week ahead of us so the work of god is not even it's not only here if it was only here then that's very easy, all right? It is more out there. And wherever you find yourself, whoever you are, how old you are, wherever you find yourself in your school, at the workplace, all right? God is, wants to use you even as you avail yourself, even as you stay connected to the Holy Spirit. Because when we are of the flesh, beloved, we will not be, we will not be connected to the Holy Spirit. When we are too much attached to the flesh, Unfortunately, we wish that this body would die and the Holy Spirit will take charge. But it's not like that. When we are too much of the flesh, the Holy Spirit cannot manifest himself. But when we are of the Spirit, then he can open our eyes. When God walked the earth, when he, he saw people, all right, there were those that he had to tell them right away, you must be born again, Nicodemus. All right, but he met, when he met the woman at the well, he said, give me a drink. All right, and then he met a leper, he healed him. He met Zacchaeus, I must eat at your house today. So the gospel is prevented in different ways in different forms the end goal is what you must be born again but sometimes you don't have to start with you must be born again sometimes you must give the person food to eat so jesus said i was naked and you clothed me i was hungry and you fed me so come into the father's house to the blessing that has been reserved for you so as we avail ourselves to the holy spirit he uses us he speaks to us so the people that you meet that you must do something before you tell them to give your life to christ you are led to do it because sometimes Sometimes when you tell the person give your life to Christ, Jesus loves you. It's like you are singing whatever a strange song that they haven't heard before. It's not that the word. And sometimes, unfortunately, your word is just a letter. It doesn't carry the spirit, so there is no power in it. But we are praying that even as we are born of the spirit, and even as the Holy Spirit empowers us, and even as we avail ourselves to the move to the work of God, He will use us as we stay connected. Jesus said, "I am the vine; you are the branches. You cannot do anything without me." If you abide in the vine and you take your source, you continue to receive your nourishment from me. That is when the, out of your belly, the rivers of living water are flowing and it will be a blessing. Wherever the river goes, there is life. But when too many things, the cares of this life are choking the river, beloved, it will not flow and life will not be seen. But I pray that the Lord will give us grace. I pray that the Lord will give us grace. I want to conclude here to read the scripture to us. For by grace are you saved. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. All right. It is by grace. All right. And the Bible says that what the Lord gives grace. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. Where we obtain mercy. Father, we have missed it. We have fallen short. We have missed this assignment. We don't understand it. We don't even have love as we ought to love. As Jesus had compassion on the people, we don't have it. So we see the person and nothing clicks that we must share the word of God. And sometimes our burdens and our issues overshadow, overtake us and we are not even able to let them go to share the word of God but the Bible says in Hebrews 13 20 and 21 it says that now may the God of peace who through again the 
who brought back again or who brought again from the dead our lord jesus hebrews 13 20 to 21 now may the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant or the everlasting covenant verse 21 this is where I want you to make it your prayer. If you want to do the work of God, if you want to be about the master's business, he says that what may he make you perfect in every good work. May he make you perfect in every good work. Paul said, not that I have attained, but I press on onto the goal of the higher calling. So it is not today, but God wants to make you and I perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom be glory forever and ever. May the Lord make us perfect even as we press on. May the Lord help us. May grace be sufficient unto us. May he release more grace, great grace, pour out grace unto us even to do his will, even to the glory of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word of God has come. You might be here. You haven't entered the kingdom of God yet. The Bible says that no man can enter the kingdom except he is born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. You are here. You are not born again. You want to be born again. You are here. You know somebody that is not born again. You want to pray for the person that he will come. The light of the gospel of Christ will shine upon him. Maybe through you. Maybe through somebody. You are on the line watching us. You want to be born again. You want to enter the kingdom of God. Even to do the good works that God ordained for you to walk in. Because if you are not a child of God, beloved, everything that you are doing is nothing. It amounts to nothing before God. But when you become a child of God, now you are set on the path to do the good works. If you want to give your life to Christ, you want to raise up your hand. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you want to raise up your hand so that we pray, we pray with you. If you're on the line, you want to raise up your hand. Is anybody here that wants to rededicate his life to Christ? Is anybody here that want to give his life to Christ? I don't know if anybody is watching here um, now or may watch even in the days ahead. But we want to say this prayer. Even you want to say this prayer if you're watching online and you want to give your life to Christ. You want to say this prayer for somebody that you are praying the Lord. He will come to the knowledge of the gospel of Christ. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you came to die and shed your blood for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, I know that you have come to live in me, even this very moment, to help me to walk, to live this Christian life, to walk this walk, even for your glory. From today, I surrender my life to your will. Have your own way in my life and help me to fulfill your will even in my lifetime. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We thank God for today. And um, I will hand over to who is coming. God bless you. Amen.